Hey everybody. Today we're going to be installing a baler mounted moisture tester. It's the Agritronics BH2 moisture meter. And I have one already mounted in my 7130 here. And we're going to mount a monitor in the 6400 today. But I got all the pieces out, show you what we got. I already have the monitor sitting in there. So we have a, this is a wire for running back to one of the sensor pads that runs along the baler to the right side or left. Here's another one. And here's our power cable for the monitor. And here's our sensor pads that would be mounted in the bale chamber. Forget my windows are super dirty because this tractor was on a corn auger all fall. But I just have a John Deere mount here and just a single bolt through this and run my wires on the back side. How we ended up doing the power on this is we took out the cigarette lighter because it didn't work anyway. Usually we would just run a cigarette lighter plug, I guess on the other tractor, uh, into there. But we took it out and put in one of these plugs. Just got another one. If I can get that wire in there. They give you a lot of power cable. But just plugs in. Like that. Kind of like how the round baler plugs do back here is the same sort of plug right here but and it powers up and your left and right uh moisture sensor pads will plug in right here not obviously connected to anything right now so but powers up that's an easy way, but I'd rather would have went with a 12 volt plug, but this will stay in here anyway. So, doesn't really matter. But, so that's how we powered that up. So we're gonna put the moisture meters on this New Holland BC5070 Hayliner baler. And they're gonna go, if there's a knot, there's trip arm. So they're gonna go right here just behind the needle arm. Get that taped on and then we'll drill our holes and it takes a quarter inch bit and a 11 64ths bit. Just like that. And then we'll center punch these holes and we can get them drilled. We'll get this center punched. drilled out because that's what bit I have right now and one I gotta get the other bit all right now we got our holes drilled we can put this sensor pad in so we got our sensor pad. You can see it's got a wedge on the front. That's obviously gonna go to the front. And we'll get our nuts and bolts out here. Now we're gonna put a lock washer and a nut on there. Little tiny, tiny little things. I don't suggest dropping any because these things are so hard to find. 
and not generally something you have on the shelf. Lock washer on. Nut on. And then the next one. Now these back ones a little plastic piece is going to go in there so that way it doesn't touch the side wall of the hole this is that little plastic spacer just going to go in there just so that bolt can't touch us metal and same thing on the bottom now we're gonna have plastic washers on the outside there's the other we're gonna put a nut in the lock washer on top of those plastic washers there's one I'm only doing one at a time because these little little tiny pieces I drop easy and they don't give you no extras If you can hear the wind, it's howling out there and the doors are banging. So well, sorry about that. And those are just there so there's no metal on metal contact with those. And then our wires are gonna go on here next. I don't remember which goes where off the top of my head. The wires will go one here, one there, and then we'll put another lock washer and nut on there. But this side is done until we get to the wiring part so we're gonna get these next ones other side drilled out here well this one's gonna be difficult with this here all right well I got those holes drilled we're gonna file the back side Well, that's lucky that that lined up. It's all started. We'll get the bolts tight. Get a long pair of pliers. Now we are gonna fish the wires through the tongue here, ideally. For the. I don't want to be rolling back too far. If I push it back in. Got it. All right. Well, let me give you some more. All right, I'm gonna get that fish through. We can attach the wires to that and pull them through. All right, you got them started? Yeah. Right there. Wind it up, what did I do with the other ones? In the front or back? In the front, in the cab. I just ran that wire up through there. I just run my wire up like that. Check them on there. that's it comes up through here zip tied to that one and here we go that part will go to the tractor 
Pretty easy. And that's what they look like on the inside. There's that one. And that one. Just sit right in there. <laughs> We're all done with this project. This baler's put away and this one also has the same thing in there. And these massy ones, they just run up through here is where we ran our wires. Then the same thing, just drill a little hole. And they're in there as well. These ones have probably, oh, I'd say 40,000 bales through them. And we haven't had any issues with those. We haven't had any issues with those wearing out yet, so. They usually last probably 50,000 bale, 60,000 before you'd have to replace them. So now I have it on this New Holland baler and this Massey baler already had it. This also has the preservative applicator on it. And this one will probably get that this year as well. This one generally only does straw, but now we're into more hay. This gets used for hay as well. It's really nice when they work. Saves you a lot of headache. You can't 100% rely on the moisture testers in the bale chamber. So I still use a hand one as well. And then kind of average between them what it is. Usually a little bit closer to the handheld probe, but it's nice. You can set a margin of error. So say your handheld and your baler moisture are always two points off or so. You could change your mo your baler one to match your uh, handheld one. But, so that's kind of nice. So you can set it pretty close to what you want. And that's installing a baler monitor on a New Holland baler. It's a little time consuming, but it ain't really too bad to do. So anyway, thanks for watching and Please like and subscribe and comment. So, see you later, everybody.